Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Taranique Show. I am your host, Taranique. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another episode. On this episode, we're going to talk about the importance of knowing your hair type and using products that are created for your specific hair type. So there's been a lot of recent hair product launches, a lot of trendy launches, a lot of celebrity uh, launching their brands. And I know that it's very tempting to like want to try new stuff and jump on, you know, using new products because, hey, I really like the celebrity and I really want to support them. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But before you do jump to using, you know, products that are launched by someone who may not be an authority in the hair care space or, you know, someone that's just launching a product because for whatever reason, who knows what their reasons are behind it. You, I would encourage you to do your research on the ingredients and find out if these ingredients really work for you. Not even uh, celebrity products, right? Any kind of product that you see a lot of people are using, you want to make sure that these products will work good for you because, you know, we find that a lot of us will jump on trends and the trends may not be the trend for us. It may actually do more harm to us than good. For example, this trend here in Miami where everyone, not everyone, but the majority of people are walking around with sneakers and the socks that come up like to their calves, like above their ankles. I'm just like, this trend is not for me. My friends here keep trying to get me on the trend of wearing these high socks with my sneakers when I work out. I will not succumb to that trend because it's not for me. First of all, it's 100 degree weather here. Why am I gonna be outside wearing high socks? So that's a trend that's not for me. And for example, the new trend now is wearing baggy pants, so wearing baggy jeans. Well, I'm tall, I'm curvy, and if I wear baggy clothes, it makes me look bigger than I actually am. So that's a trend that's not for me, and I'm not going to jump on that trend. So if you see trends are happening, don't just jump on the trend, especially when it has something to do especially when it's something like your hair or your skin, you know, things that will have a long-term effect. Clothing is fine, you can do that or whatever. That's not gonna have a long-term effect on the health of your hair or on the health of your body or your skin. But when you see all these trends and you're like jumping on trends and trying new things, you may actually be doing more harm than good. So the foundation of basically knowing your hair type. So what is your what is your hair type? Is your hair, if you have curly hair, is it three? Is it a type three, a type four, a type four A, a type four B? What, how are your strands? Are your strands fine? Are they medium? Are they coarse? What is the density of your hair? Is Does your hair look really full and thick? or does your hair, is your hair like look thin and sparse? So if you have, for example, fine hair strands, this type of hair, you, it, it is easily weighed down. And I would advise you to stay away from trends because this hair is easily broken, easily damaged. And if you're using products that are not created for you or those tried and true products, then what happens is, your fine strands can easily break and you know, you don't want that. You're gonna be walking around with a, a head of damaged hair. You're gonna essentially have to cut the hair off to make it even if you have too many damaged pieces. So when you have fine hair, err on the side of caution when it comes to new products, trying new products and new trends. Now, the only like caveat to that I would say for example, if you're using products that are made from natural ingredients, right? So uh, natural ingredients would be ingredients that you can easily recognize. If it has like avocado oil in it or shea butter and it has, or when you look at the ingredient statement, the majority of the ingredients are natural ingredients and ingredients that you can recognize, then yes, those 
that product may do less ha less damage less damage to your hair because it's made from natural ingredients but when you get into some of these products that are not designed for you for example there's a brand that is designed for um people with straight hair and of a different race than you know than the black race or multicultural a lot of uh, women are saying, oh, I love this product. I love how it works on my hair. So someone, you know, they, they asked me about it. They're like, oh, have you heard about this product? I was like, okay, let me do my research on it. I went and I did my research and one of the main ingredients in all of that, all of the, their products is isopropyl alcohol. And if you're not familiar with isopropyl alcohol is it's the rubbing alcohol. So when you get a cut, or when you get a bruise, you take the rubbing alcohol and you put it on your cut. The same thing with hand sanitizer. This alcohol is also in hand sanitizer to kill the germs. So the brand then states that, you know, they have a proprietary blend with isopropyl alcohol and it is not gonna damage your hair. Well, you know, you use that product for a while and if you have fine hair, I mean, you know, I don't know what to say. Just don't, just stay away from that. Just stay away from products with isopropyl alcohol in it if you have fine hair. And if you have high porosity hair, it's, it's, it's not a good, uh, it's not good, right? So the, the brand says that this proprietary blend includes isopropyl alcohol and it doesn't damage the hair. Okay. All right. If you want to believe that, then go ahead and believe it. How about you continue using the product and then see how that works on your hair? So the thing with ingredients like that is if you keep using it, continually, continually using it, you will notice that the condition of your hair will continually deteriorate. Why? That is because you're using a chemical that is drying on the hair. And if you are not doing your regular moisturizing treatments, if you have high porosity hair, if you tend to have more dry hair and you're not using your moisturizing treatments, and I think this product also, also is a leave-in, so you don't even rinse it out. That product is essentially stripping away at your hair shaft. And then you will notice, you know, months and months and months, or even a year later, oh, my, the condition of my hair is not the same. What you wanna do when trying a new product or jumping on a trend because you like the celebrity and you really want to um, support them, and I'm not saying don't support uh, other hair brands, I'm just saying what you wanna do is you wanna look at the ingredients of those brands, right? And you wanna look at the products that have been tried and true that, help, that are helping your hair to flourish. You wanna look at those ingredients and see if if this new brand has similar ingredients. So for example, if you use our Thirsty Curls Leave-In Conditioner and it's made from hibiscus, aloe vera, and honey, and you find that this works really good for your hair, then what that essentially means is that those ingredients most likely work really well for your hair. So if you find a, another brand that has you know, those same ingredients and you try their product and it works really good for your hair, it's because your hair likes honey your hair likes hibiscus. Now, when you start to venture off into using brands that, you know, are using chemicals, like a lot of chemicals, and you're like, oh, my curls look so good, I use this brand, and you're not paying attention to what's in the product, what'll happen is your hair will look good, but it will look good for a limited amount of time. So you'll notice it's what, June right now when I'm doing this video. In December, oh, my curls aren't, you know, curling like it used to. That's one of the reasons when you start to switch products, when you start to switch product lines and not pay attention to the ingredient list, then your hair starts to deteriorate slowly and slowly. It doesn't happen all in one instance. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm just saying, just be cautious what you put on your hair, right? You're not wearing a wig or you're not wearing um, human hair or whatnot. When, when, I mean, when I say human hair, I mean extensions, where you can experiment. If you are putting you know, trendy products on your natural hair, then you are susceptible to the condition of your hair deteriorating. 
There are instances where the condition of your hair will be enhanced. For example, if you're using products made from natural ingredients. But when it comes to my hair, when it comes to my body, I want to err on the side of caution. I don't want to go into the store and buy a banana and the banana not be the only ingredient in the banana, right? If there's other ingredients, I want it to be a not more natural ingredients, more healthy ingredients. I don't want it to be a proprietary blend of ingredients that are known to be damaging to the hair, to the skin, um, to the scalp, right? So know your hair type, number one. Is it, you know, type 3B, type 3C, uh, 4A, 4B? Do you have low porosity, high porosity, medium porosity hair? How are your strands? So you want to figure out those, well, four things. The density of your hair, the, you know, how are your strands? And you want to figure out your hair type. And then if you have high or low porosity hair. So you want to figure that out. After you have figured that out, then you want to research the products that worked best for your hair type right and after you found that out you can look at those products and then look at the ingredients on those products and if you want to venture out and use a new trending product then look to see if it has similar ingredients you can try stuff out but i'm saying even if you want to try something look at the ingredients make sure that the ingredients are mostly natural and make sure they're not harmful ingredients for example, with the alcohols, there are moisturizing alcohols. So get yourself, you know, educated on the difference between moisturizing and drying alcohols. I've done a video on it. I think we even have a blog post about moisturizing and drying alcohols on curlybell.com. So you want to kind of educate yourself before you start to invest the money because even though you know the new products are coming out, they are also very pricey. You don't want to waste your money and waste your time and then damage your hair because you you know you jumped on the bandwagon on the hype of these new products that are coming out and didn't do the research to see if those products work well for you so just know your hair type know which ingredients work best for you and you will continue to have a healthy hair journey i hope that this was helpful to you have a great day